Welcome to the Susan Murphy Milano Show. Time's up. Produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for Hear Women Talk. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining myself and Delilah, creator of the Time's Up blog for survivors, Time's Up. The song you were just listening to and throughout the show is titled Gone by artist Ava Anso. Susan Murphy Milano, Time's Up. As Susan proves, there's more to her reputation than a keen mind and a sweet stack of subpoenas. And now, much more Susan Murphy Milano. We are back, and, and now we switch up guests. We're doing something a little different today. We have Monica Quezon, who is returning with us. She's the founder of the Q Center for Missing Persons. We are going to be getting beginning to discuss the Beth Bentley case, um, and this is going to be one of my priorities since I am from Illinois, and I do know all the prosecutors and police officers in that state, and, and I happen to get the stalking law passed there, so I'm very familiar with this. Beth Bentley, age 41, vanished disappeared on May 23rd, 2010, from either Mount Vernon or Centralia, Illinois. It's not determined exactly where. Uh, She was supposed to be dropped off by a train in Centralia. There's different stories. Joining us also is her brother, Ron. Welcome, Ron. Thank you. You know, when when your sister vanished, how quickly was it the person that she is married to? Did he call police? Did you call police? When did you first learn that she was missing? My father called me, and Jeremy had reported, Jeremy, my nephew, her son, had reported her missing. How quickly, though, after, I mean, how much time do you think it passed before she was no longer, you know, she wasn't anywhere to be found? Was it a day, 20 hours? He reported her missing that Monday morning. That Monday morning. And and yes. there were different stories, weren't there, as far as what happened, where she could have gone? Um Oh uh, yes, there is, and they seem to change daily. And they do. And, and, and Monica... Case on from the the Q Center. This is very important because here's a woman. She's been missing. I know there's also corruption out there. The current state's attorney has just been indicted um, for whatever he's deciding to do. And there was a disturbing article in the paper last week saying that this case is closed. Please explain that. Well, it's it's really against the law to close the case, and that's what people don't understand. And uh, we are, you know, trying to get to the bottom of that. But I think everybody was. Um, kind of shocked by that statement that our investigation is over and basically we're going to see if the Illinois State Police will um, will take it. Um, there were statements uh, also by law enforcement that said that they had already, the Illinois State Police had already taken it and then we have documentation that says that's not true. So it's very confusing, not only for us, but also for the family because they were not notified of any of this. And then to have contradicting statements between law enforcement agencies back and forth so basically, right now, our case is kind of in limbo, and nobody wants to claim it. Well, for those listening, and I'm, I'm sure that family members outside of this that know what happened to her are listening, I need you to go Google my name if you're not familiar. It's Susan Murphy Milano. Because, you know, this is not going away. This officially opens up this case to help the Q Center, to help the family get the person or persons responsible. I am aware of who all of you are. I, I am aware of what you all do for a living. And I'm just, I'm saying bring it on um, because this woman is missing and she's not missing for nothing. She's missing for a reason. And was it determined, Monica or Ron, that she ever had even gotten on a train? You can go ahead, Ron. Oh, no, it's never been determined. It's never been verified that she ever got on that train. And have Maybe you... Bob. Have you been able to get any closer since she's been missing? I mean, from has has her the person that she was married to has he been cooperative at all in helping you find her? Has he been helping in a search or or putting up posters? No, no. And 
you know, it's been my experience that people that don't get involved, Delilah, what happens? Well, it's it's a good first place to take a very strong look. It's the pattern of conduct and the pattern of behavior that does or doesn't happen in these cases. And this is a really strong indication of that, that so many things they're not even looking for her. I understand, Ron, that right after your sister went missing, a woman was moved into the marital home. That is correct. And and this person is to whom is this person to uh, the estranged husband? As far as I know, um, you know, it's in my opinion that it was his girlfriend, but I can't verify that. Maybe she's a housekeeper with kids. She's got kids. She's moved in. The girlfriend. Shortly, how many days after your sister goes missing is this woman take habitant in this in this house? Uh. I believe it was about four months after she was disappeared. It sounds like the same timeline that my buddy Drew Peterson did, didn't? Doesn't it? With Christina Rains, uh, Drew Peterson is a Bolingbroke police officer. Um, that you know, all of a sudden he moves in his new girlfriend. These people have no conscience. And 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 Monica, you are now doing a big campaign on this case. Not just a campaign, but you're going to go down there and search for her, and and find her body. What do you need for the from the public to help you with this case? Well, Susan, we're still identifying some areas. Um, what we've done in the meantime was start a program called Miles for Beth. It was very effective in the Bryce Tarter case that we worked down in Savannah, Georgia area last year. And so we're trying to get people involved in that to get out, start putting posters. You could put them in the plastic bags and hang them you know, on mailboxes in all these rural areas, go door to door, get the word out that she was missing, see if any clues or or tips or someone that hasn't been reached because obviously this case has not been at the forefront of the media. It's been a little article here or a news clipping there or, or, or a bleep on the TV. So there's many, many people that have not been reached yet that even know about her disappearance. So well, that's one campaign, which is awareness campaign. I know also... Um, friends of Beth and, and other people involved in her case or whatever early on put up some billboards. I don't know what that brought in because we were not involved. Um, but I'm sure there are tips and other things and, and things to investigate that, you know, you can never get to a clay case even 10 years later and say we're done with our investigation. Well, that's so that think, reeks. Why would you do yeah. that? Why would you – is that to say that – so that means that the Who's police, connected to who? Who? Yeah, who is who is right. right. Yeah, and 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 um, it's just unheard of. It's it, it, unheard it is of. unheard of. And, it, and it, I just, you know, it's been very. I mean, they've not, um, you know, they they've obviously been in touch with the husband, but other family members call, you know, every week and are trying to get more things done, and they're pretty much, you know, just uh, turned away. Monica um, had it on the head and turned away. Have you have you gotten cooperation out of the law enforcement agency up there? Um, not really. We've uh, we have other law enforcement agencies we've been speaking with as far as the search areas and stuff and, and getting advice. But we have um, you know we sent numerous emails and, and been in touch. And I even sent someone up there to talk to him. He you know called him throughout the day. Never was able to catch him after the law you know the law enforcement said they would make their stuff available to him. So it kind of stopped our effort. We were getting ready to begin a search, and that kind of stopped because I really didn't know a lot of the facts. Like, did she get on the train? We know she didn't. So, But at the time that I became involved, there were things that I needed to verify, verify and just find out simple things, not into their investigation, but just simple things as far as how we could aid to begin a search and then move on from there. You know, it's always easy to say, well, we have no real area to search, but there is always an area to search and to begin at, and then if information comes later, you move to that area. So I don't believe it when they say in a missing person that there is never an area to begin with because it's just not true, and I don't care if it's five hours or five minutes of of area you're looking at. There is a place to start somewhere. Would you do then, is it the, I know it's the police chief in Woodstock. Is it also Woodstock and Mount Vernon Police Departments? Are you working with, trying to work with both of them? Um, I, my primary contact has been with the uh, Woodstock Police Department. And, and see, that would seem that they, they would be cooperative. They would be... Cause well, they were they, the lead agency. They were the lead agency. And, you know, they said they would be... Their, their, their words are not, um, you know, at the same caliber of the actions, which, you know, we're not out here to bash anyone. But no. it's just been very difficult because we work with law enforcement all over you know, the United States, and we just... 
we get a good response. Um, we work side by side with them and try to bring free resources to them. So this is just a matter of a little bit of their time and maybe having a few officers available to us to conduct the searches. And we pretty much handle all the logistical and, and resources that are brought in. Um, but like I said, you know, there's it's just been incredibly difficult in this case, but it's not impossible. And we will get there to search for Beth Bentley, and we are working on that plan. Um, you know, and if they choose not to support it, then we will hire police officers to come in and be at assistance because that's our protocol. We have to have law enforcement on the search. So we are looking into that avenue as well as far as hiring officers. Ron, was your sister's marriage, were they going through a divorce? Was there problems? Was there troubles? You know, in my, my, my honest opinion, it was if there was troubles, it was well hidden. Um, nobody ever saw it. What about the kids? So, How many children does she have that are still now with uh, the person she was married to? Um, two just moved out recently. The two oldest ones moved out in their, in their own apartment, and the younger one, uh, CJ, is living there. Anybody check to see if he's tried to make movement in the court for a divorce or tried to declare her something or other, uh, abandonment? Not that I'm aware of. I would start checking that. That's one of the first things. He's a lawyer, and he's very clever at doing those or having some of those things done, so I would start checking online. It's McHenry County, right? Yes. Okay. Very familiar with that process. Get your get yourself online. Have somebody do it. Monitor that to see because it can go through unsuspectingly and or it can go through another county. Um, McHenry, Will, DuPage, uh it will go another route so that it's not detectable. So just don't check the online status of divorces that way because he, a, a good lawyer can do this. I do it with better women across the country. I have them get divorced or, or post it somewhere else so that it doesn't show up. And that's something that you're going to have to kind of be diligent about because it's very important. That's also something that, again... Um, somebody can do without anybody's knowledge. And this case has not been very high profile, has it, Monica? No, it hasn't. And we really don't want to point any fingers at anyone. All we know is that Beth is missing, and we want to begin a search for her, and we want to be more proactive, um, and the family wants that as well. And um, it's just, like I said, it's kind of like she got missing. There were a few articles. They had a candlelight vigil, um, which was decently attended. Um, you know, other than that, there's a group of online people that are trying to keep the word out there and trying to keep the buzz up, but there's nothing beyond that. I mean, there's no real interest. We had her on Nancy Grace, um, well, we'll have her on Nancy Grace tonight, but we don't know how long of a segment. But it's like bits and pieces here and there, and it's just not enough to really get the word out in the area that she disappeared from to where she was traveling to where she lived to really get through to those people and let them know that this woman, you know, traveled through their part at one point and do they have any information. So that's really um, people in this case. People listening, where can they, since the police, you know, don't seem to have an active kind of a tip line, you have an anonymous tip line. What is the number for that, please, because we're running out of time for this segment. Okay, it's 910-232-1687. We also, on our website, www.ncmissingpersons.org, to Beth Bentley's website, and you can also leave a tip there, which is all of our tips are turned into law enforcement, but we will also, um, you know, make sure that all these tips are looked into. So, you know, we definitely want to uh, reach out to the community to step up and do the right thing and, and, you know, give law enforcement or somebody, reach out to somebody and let them know where we can um, look for this young lady. We're out of time. Uh, Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. We are going to be diligent on this case from this point forward. Uh, We'll be right back with Monica Quezon and more cases from the Q Center. Grab your curling iron and get ready to rumble. It's Susan Murphy Milano taking on cold cases and hot issues. This woman's got issues, all right. Her issue is with justice, the best beloved of all things. Get ready for another hour of the Susan Murphy.